For me, 1960's The Apartment, directed by Billy Wilder, starring Jack Lemmon, Shirley MacLaine, and Fred McMurray, is a perfect film. As far as I'm concerned, you're tops. I mean, decency-wise and otherwise-wise. <laughs> Cheers. There's a lot I could say about this movie, from what it means to be a mensch. Why don't you grow up, Baxter? Be a mensch. Do you know what that means? I'm not sure. A mensch, a human being! To Shirley MacLaine's understated expressivity. <laughs> to Jack Lemmon's inspired physical acting. Hey, you're pretty good with that racket. You should see my backhand. <laughs> Where'd you see me serve the meatballs? <laughs> To the movie's innumerable and divinely executed setups. The mirror is broken. It was broken when I found it. And payoffs. What's the matter? Um, the mirror is broken. Yes, I know. I like it that way. Makes me look the way I feel. But I think an often overlooked attribute of The Apartment is its cinematography. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Apartment holds the rare distinction of having been filmed on both black and white film stock and anamorphic widescreen lenses. To backtrack quickly, What's my line? the 1950s saw the rise of television. Brought to you by Kellogg's. Now, would you say that you deal with more sex, more with one? <laughs> and movie studios were urgently seeking new and exciting ways to lure consumer butts off their couches and back into theater seats. <laughs> he made me do it. You think I'm the only one that's obsessed with that subject, huh? <laughs> so, how did they do it? The answer came in a surge of various widescreen cinematic processes. From the clunky yet beautifully eccentric Cinerama to the landmark Cinemascope to the Todd A.O. and Super Panavision 70 processes, widescreen became the new standard in filmmaking. And the apartment was no exception. I love you, Miss Kubelik. Three. Queen. Did you hear what I said, Miss Kubelik? I absolutely adore you. Shut up and deal. Cinematographer Joseph Lachelle chose to shoot the apartment on Panavision anamorphic lenses. Cinemascope was the first anamorphic process to premiere on the big screen with 1953's The Rogue, released through 20th Century Fox. This process allowed twice as wide a picture to be squeezed onto a standard 35mm film stock using specialized lenses. However, early CinemaScope films suffered from somewhat distracting image distortions. When an actor approached the camera, part of the nature of anamorphics, unless you do a lot of compensatory things in the design is that people will end up looking fat when they're projected in the theater. It's because the lens doesn't squeeze as much, but the projection lens still expands just as much. So Victor Mature, when he's at the crucifixion, if you look at his face, it's a round face. It's, it's more like a kid would have, you know, it's, a, it's, it's distorted. So they were working against all these problems. Throughout the 50s, Panavision helped solve a lot of the technical issues involved in anamorphic processes and eventually replaced CinemaScope entirely. By the time production started on the apartment, Panavision had developed beautifully sharp anamorphic lenses and any curvy aberrations simply enhanced the grandeur of the wide image. The apartment stands out among its widescreen contemporaries in that most films shot on anamorphic were also shot in color, yet another attempt to compete with television. However, old color film stock had a harder time resolving light. I'll wait for you here. Filmmakers were forced to either heavily light their sets 
Hurt yourself, frankincense? Or opened up the aperture in their camera lenses to let more light in. Come on, let's go. This caused a narrower depth of field where less of the picture was in focus. Black and white film did not have this issue. The focus range of Lachelle's images could be as deep Hi, buddy boy. Congratulations and all that jazz. or as shallow as he desired in either heavy, harsh lighting. Let me see what I can do. I'll get back to you or nighttime darkness, depending upon what the scene called for. Furthermore, the contrasts between blacks and whites and grays made for striking photography. Coupled with the anamorphic widescreen format, dynamic background and foreground interactions all within the frame Isn't there some sort of message you want me to give her? created some of the film's most dramatic moments. Yes, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Sheldrake. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Baxter. Miss Kimberly, what are you doing out of bed? I didn't know. I had no idea this was your apartment. Here, let me help you. Black and white films shot on anamorphic lenses have been rare in motion picture history. Asian side. But the images from those films are unforgettable. I hope future filmmakers will see the potential of this gorgeous process and utilize it further. For Frame of Mind, I'm Britt Michael Gordon.